This video is rather experimental in nature, but I encourage you to check out all of the, the different parts from the beginning. This brief light inspection maybe take off. Check out some of the included air traffic control audio. And let's discover what we can do with this idea in the future. We'll continue the brief light inspection after this very loud airplane that's about to pass, passes. Best. I do want to mention that I did the brief light inspection twice. I will admit this is a more condensed version for the video. The complete brief light checklist with, or I'm sorry, inspection with the checklist was performed before. Just in case any of you pilots out there are judging my flow. For those of you that don't know, the fuel for most planes is stored in the wings. So now I am checking the level of fuel in each of the two fuel tanks, which is normally the same since they're connected. specifically waited to clean the glare shield until I was recording. We'll see after it's edited. See when I get to that phase in editing. Like I said. a bunch of experimental facets of the flight. So, I'm leaving this whole brief light footage in. And we'll see if you like the airport ambience and the wind.
Now we're going to run through everything we did outside. Uh, there's no covers or anything on the airplane. Pilot operating handbook is in the aircraft. The weight and balance is checked. Parking brake is set. Actually, the parking brake is not set, but we have it set with our feet. The ignition switch is off. The avionics master switch is off. Control wheel lock is removed. Master switch is on. Fuel quantities checked. We have 20 and 19. Uh, that fuel gauge will start working here in a little bit. Fuel quality indicators will check once the airplane decides to start working here. Look at that. We have fuel. Uh, the Asian X Master switch is on. I don't know if you could pick that up. Got the Asian X Master switch cooling fan clicked on. The static pressure alternate source valve is off. There's no enunciator panel. The fuel selector valve is set to go. The fuel shutoff valve uh, is in. Flaps are extended on either side. Uh, there's no beat out heat. Master switch is off. Elevator trim is set for takeoff. The baggage door is secured. Double checking that it is. We checked all the openings, tie downs, trim tabs, antennas, ailerons, flaps, caps, fuel strainer valve, oil dipstick, intakes, air filter, ailerons, and flaps. So we just finished. We're rerunning over the checklist, and we are going to get uh, an Endeavour flight departing. That's Endeavour 5303, a CRJ-900 flying to Atlanta. Odds are one in a couple hundred million, but if you happen to be on board that flight, let me know. Okay, anyway, back to what we were doing. Uh, looking at our checklist, the pre-flight inspection is complete. We have no passengers to brief except for you. So make sure that you have a pair of headphones on. You sit back, relax, keep your seatbelt on for the duration of the flight, and enjoy. Our brakes are tested and set. Circuit breakers. are all in. The electrical equipment is off. The avionics master switch is off. The fuel selector valve is still set to both. The fuel shutoff valve is on and the circuit breakers are still in. We're going to start the engine with the battery today, so the throttle, I'm going to cycle it and open it a quarter of an inch. The mixture is at idle.
Foxtrot 2253 Zulu, wind 200 at 13, visibility 10, 6000 scattered, ceiling 900,000 broken, temperature 19 dew point 10, altimeter 3006. Visual approach, runway 23 in use, hazardous phone information for the Tri-Cities area, available on flight service frequencies. Advise on initial contact, GF Foxtrot. Okay, so we just picked up the weather there. We're putting in our frequencies, getting ready to go. 121.7 for the ground frequency. We're going to go ahead and listen to them. 19.5 for the tower. And uh, we can go ahead and call them up. We have additional information. Foxtrot. We're going to clear this. Today we are going to Knoxville, Mickey Tyson Airport. And we're going there at 4,500. Tri-City Ground, Skyhawk 4179 Lima. Skyhawk 4179 Lima, Tri-City Ground. 4179 Lima is on the ramp with Foxtrot VFR to Knoxville. Mickey Tyson at 4,500 ready to taxi. Skyhawk 79 Lima, stand by for flight following. You can go ahead and start taxiing to runway 23 via Alpha. We'll stand by for a flight following T3 via Alpha, Skyhawk 79 Lima. Alright, so we're just going to taxi over here to the end of the runway. And, uh,. ATC is going to give us our information for the departure frequency and transponder code that we need to be on here in a minute. We're number one, so we're going to switch to the tower frequency and put in our expected departure frequency when we get up here to the line. Skyhawk 79 Lima, the departure frequency is 134.42, and your squawk is 5104. 3442, 5104, uh, 30 seconds, we'll be ready. Skyhawk 79 Lima, roger that, just uh, let me know when. Gotcha. So we're going to run the engines up to 1700 RPM, check the right magneto, it drops no more than 125, go back to both, left magneto drops no more than 125, they're within 50 of each other, pull the car peat out, it drops, return it to normal, it didn't go any higher than it was before, so there's no carburetor icing, I'm going to pull it again and drop the throttle all the way to idle, make sure the engine doesn't quit while we're sitting here, and I remember, let's go ahead and align our heading indicator, which processes, because it's a gyroscope. We've got zero on the airspeed, wings level, field elevation, um, three, zero, zero, six on the altimeter, that's set, field elevation is set, everything's good to go. Tower Skyhawk 4179 Lima is ready. Skyhawk 4179 Lima, Tri-City East Tower, turn right on course to Knoxville. Runway 23, clear for takeoff. Right on course, 23, clear for takeoff, Skyhawk 4179 Lima. All right, so we are clear for takeoff. We're going to go ahead and throw the landing light on. Runway 23, a beautiful Tri-Cities Airport. I mean, just look at this. Absolutely gorgeous. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight, everyone. If a part two would be interesting, let me know. There's a little bit of dead time in the audio. I think if I do a remake, I'm going to record the ambient cockpit sounds separately to overlay, as well as the headset audio. Just like that, we are airborne. airborne. <laughs> I timed that horribly. Passing the tower there as we climb out. Sorry about the uh, head cam. I hope the movements are relaxing. Just
guys will look out pretty. November 79er Lima, contact departure, good day. Departure 79 Lima, good day. Departure Sky 4179 Lima, we're passing 2 for 4.5 on course Knoxville. November 4179 Lima, Charles City's departure radar contact out of 2200. VFR altitude or discretion, and uh, you said you're on course to Knoxville. At a 2.2 altitude, my discretion, and that is correct. 79 Lima. Thank you. Anytime. So we're just uh, talking to air traffic control there as we depart. That is one of my favorite controllers if we're fortunate enough to catch them on the way back. Normally, there's some. Uh, Pretty fun banter to be had back and forth. Getting a little bit of turbulence as we climb out here, but uh, pretty smooth air. Just look at that beautiful East Tennessee scenery. The mountains in the distance. And uh, relax with me on this flight. Our flight time is going to be about uh, uh, probably probably just under an hour. I've done this flight uh, to Knoxville many a time, but I uh, can't remember the exact time that I briefed. But we're just going to hang out up here for a little bit, uh, probably talk about some some airplane things, aeroplane, and hopefully you find it relaxing. So, uh, I don't know if I've mentioned it or if you caught it on the radio, but we are going to be climbing up to 4,500 feet today, and um, that is above sea level, or MSL, main sea level. The actual altitude we are above the ground is called AGL, or above ground level. And here in East Tennessee, at least specifically where I took off from, we're about 1,500 feet above the sea level already. So, at 4,500 feet above sea level, we're going to be cruising at about 3,000 feet above the ground, or a little over half a second. Trace City Approach 2617 Delta Hotel, I'll go ahead and cancel flight following. You can hear another pilot there. I'm sorry, who was trying to, uh, wanting to cancel flight following? Mooney 617 Delta Hotel. Mooney 617 Delta Hotel, Roger, you are inbound to land at Trace Cities, correct? Affirmative, 617 Delta Hotel. Okay, um, if you want to cancel flight following, uh, so I'll, I'll be switching you to the tower um, so they can work you in. Uh, they're going to have to talk to you uh, and provide landing clearance for you. So uh, right now, Tri Cities Airport's 12 o'clock and about 1 4 miles. Advise when you have an insight. We'll advise 617 Delta Hotel. Okay, um, so that pilot must be confused. To try to explain it in short, she wants air traffic control to stop talking to her, which you can do as a VFR aircraft uh, like us tonight. We're not flying on a flight plan, just flying visually. Except she's landing at an airport with air traffic control, and she's in their airspace. Um, so the controller pretty much very nicely ignored her request, her very strange, weird request. Alright, so we have arrived at cruise altitude. I'm going to run a couple of uh, checklists. Well, it's a pretty short checklist. The power set. We're going for about 2400 RPM, which is within tolerance. Going to go ahead and get us trimmed out here. Of course, correct to the uh, correct heading a little bit. And it's a little windier than predicted up here, showing a little over one hour to Knoxville. Our elevator trim is adjusted. We're going to keep adjusting it here. 
and we're going to lean the mixture, which is um, the fuel to air ratio going into the engine. So we're leaning it less fuel, less full fuel burn, more efficient. Actually, by giving it less fuel. by pulling that red knob there. And here we go. With the sun right in your camera, not a whole lot to do. We'll uh, jump forward here a little bit. We'll talk to you here in a couple of minutes. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say. All right, guys, so with the sun behind the clouds a little bit, I thought I'd uh, set up this camera angle real quick. It, lighting looks a little bit decent. And i uh, talk to you face to face. So how's it going? How are you enjoying this flight in our lovely, uh, very old Cessna 172 that I'm uh, renting this evening? This uh, model is from 1966 which sounds a little bit scary, but uh, most smaller planes like this are actually pretty old. All right, so kind of a weird angle, but uh, it's also kind of working. Uh, we've got about 50 minutes to go to get to Knoxville. We're in route here, 4,500 feet. Not sure if I kept it in. Uh, again, I'm not entirely sure what this ATC audio sounds like. Uh, but there was a very interesting transmission uh, of a pilot that was a little bit confused on how to land at this airport, apparently, or who she needed to talk to. I think I already talked about that. Uh, but I guess I'll take this time to answer a couple of questions that I've uh, that I've been getting, and some some common questions that may haven't been asked yet. But uh, you may you may share those que those questions. So. I've been interested in aviation ever since I was five. Um, my parents bought me a 30-minute orientation flight uh, with just some local instructor in, in Indiana where we lived at the time. The airport identifier, I think, is 3 Echo Victor, or 9 or Echo Victor. I'd have to recheck in my logbook. Uh, but I went flying, and I was hooked. So for my sixth birthday, I was asking, well, when are we flying? When are we flying? Uh, and it led to this. I soloed. Uh, for the first time, so flying in the plane without an instructor in it in a Cessna 150 or 152 um, in Greenville, Tennessee on my 16th birthday. And I've been flying ever since, licensed at 17, and i am uh, just met the commercial hour requirement, so hopefully sometime soon we'll be completing my instrument commercial pilot's licenses, uh, flight instructor, and moving on from there. Uh, another question, how many hours do you have? As of this video, I have 252 point, we're probably at point five now. Uh, so just hit the FAA commercial pilot requirement of 250. Is it hard to get your pilot's license is one that I get asked a lot. Um, and it really kind of just depends on you. I don't think it's actually um, entirely too difficult. There's a little bit of studying required, uh, but as far as actually flying the plane, you know, you get a feel for it. It becomes natural. Um, it becomes like driving a car. Would you get a look? at this mountain over here. I don't know why I didn't just use my head cam to show you, but uh, just a beautiful day. So, um, I 
think I've decided I'm going to do, a lot of people have done like ASMR in a car, just tapping on things, the steering wheel and stuff. I want to try to find a quiet night at the airport, uh, get into one of the planes, and uh, <laughs> make, uh, make a video just in the cockpit, tapping on random things. Um, I think that could be pretty cool. Okay, so we have a Piedmont or American Airlines aircraft, um, as well as LabQuest, uh, which is, I think it's, a, it's like a private company that transports medical material, um, like blood, stuff like that. They're both on approach to Tri-Cities, so uh, I'm going to leave the camera and audio rolling a little bit. Maybe we can catch a little bit of their approach. If not, there should be plenty for us to hear when we get to Knoxville. Um, so we'll hang out and chat for a while, see if we can hear anything. So we'll, while we're in a little bit of a lull uh, in route here, we'll go ahead and uh, talk about some of the instruments and gauges that we have around the airplane. Starting at the top left, we have the fuel gauge, which is pretty self-explanatory. So in uh, most of these smaller single-engine airplanes, um, the fuel is stored in the wings. Um, so there's two fuel tanks and they are gravity fed to the engine. There's no fuel pump or anything. Um, and they also cross feed to each other. So the fuel tanks stay relatively even um, throughout the flight. The reading may be off due to us have been in a, a small bank. The tanks may actually be a little bit off, but, but they're pretty much the same. Next, we have our airspeed indicator. In this particular aircraft, the outer dial. Southwest 782, fly heading 050, vector sequence. Heading 050, live code 782. So he read that back wrong, I think. Didn't he say 070? Maybe not. Uh, so he's turning, he's getting vectored in um, to land. So like if you're landing here at Greenville, they might take him this way, this way, then in. So that's what they're doing there. But the outer ring of the airspeed indicator is in miles per hour. The inner's in knots. Um, knots are nautical mile, so a statute mile being 5,280 feet and a nautical mile being 6,000 feet. Uh, here we have an old clock that doesn't work. Actually, it might work. Oh yeah, you just have to wind it. Look at that. Wow, it's a mechanical clock. Let's see what time it is. I don't know if that's on camera or not, uh, but it's 740. How, how did, what? Oh, oh, there we go. Six, seven, forty-five-ish. Beamer 5829, descend and maintain 5100. 5100, Beamer 5829. Lima 5829, turn right, heading 020, vector visual oh, approach, turn way 23. 020, 5829. There we go, now I'm winding in the movement again. Lab Coast 782, descend and maintain 4000. 4000, feel inside one, help. Lab Coast 782. Lab Coast 782, roger, your number two, following a regional jet about uh, one zero mile southeast of Trust Cities at this time. Roger, we're looking, Lab Coast 782. So you can hear their air traffic controls talking to those two aircraft, that Lab, Qua Lab Quest and that Piedmont. They're getting ready to land at Tri-Cities. Uh, so that's the airspeed indicator. There's a couple of different colors. The white arc is the safe range at which we can lower our flaps. Um, I'm going to dumb, not like dumb it down, uh, but for those of you that are pilots or Extreme. Speed mile 5829, the Tri-Cities Airport, 9 o'clock, 8 miles advised if you have an insight. 
Yeah, 5821, we got the airport site. Seamount 5829, thank you. Clear the visual approach, runway 23. Clear the uh, visual runway 23, Seamount 5829. So that American Airlines aircraft can see the airport, and he's been cleared to approach it just visually. So he's just descending as he needs, turning as he needs to get lined up with the runway. Um, but I'm not necessarily dumbing things down, but I'll explain them in slightly more um, bite-sized terms. The green arc essentially is the speed at which it's safe to speed. Um, then we have the yellow arc or the caution range, and that is, so you can fly in stable, like smooth air, not a lot of turbulence, uh, and you can't do any crazy maneuvers. In between there, somewhere around 110, 115, this airplane um, is VA, which is maneuvering speed, the speed at which you want to do a majority of your maneuvers at. And then we have uh, VNE, or the never exceed speed, which in this aircraft is You'd have to look at the pilot operating handbook. It looks to be about 178, 179. We're not doing anything that's going to get us anywhere near those speeds today. Um, here we have the clock, which we discovered. <laughs> we have the artificial horizon here, which if you look out, pretty much looks like the horizon. we got the blue sky, the darker colored ground uh, in it follows the horizon. So if we turn the airplane to the left, the artificial horizon goes to the left. As we turn the airplane to the right, the wings on the artificial horizon go to the right. Uh, so that's pretty much how that works. I gotta respond to um, a text message. Don't text and fly. We'll be right back. More about the instruments over here, we have the altimeter. Now this is red like a clock. There's a, <laughs> let me actually climb a little bit uh, so that the hands aren't on top of each other. So here's the altimeter, which is set in, it's the barometric atmospheric pressure in inches of mercury. And it's red like a clock. So the shorthand is at the four, so we're at 4,000. Five close 782, the regional jet you're following is 11 o'clock and about uh, one zero miles, descending from 3,500. Traffic inside, Lab Coast 782. Lab Coast 782, follow that regional jet, clear visual approach, runway 23, contact tower 1100.5. Follow the regional, clear visual 23, tower 19, fire, Lab Coast 782. So that's right in hundreds of feet, so we're at 4,000. 500 feet. Hopefully the sun isn't bright, uh, isn't too bright. But we'll get done talking with the instruments, um, and then we'll uh, r record more on the flight back or as we approach. And it's a little bit. November four one seven under Lima contact tower. Or correction contact Knoxville approach one one eight point zero. Tower correction Knoxville on eighteen point zero seven at Lima. Just having a little bit of fun with the controller there. Knoxville, Skyhawk 417, Lima 4.5. Skyhawk 417, Lima, Knoxville approach, Knoxville Altimeter 3006, eight is Papa, current, plan a straight in, runway 23 right. 3006, we'll get uh, Papa, and is there any chance you have the staffing for a surveillance approach tonight? November 7, Niner Lima, Sierra Club. Do you have the staffing for a surveillance approach tonight in ASR? We do not provide ASRs anymore for November 7, 9 or anymore. Oh, that's very sad. Good to know. Thank you. Yes. And approach Skyhawk 417 Lima. We're going to change destination to Downtown Island, full stop. November 7, 9 or Lima, copy. All right. So there, uh, I requested a surveillance approach, which is uh, kind of a special military approach that most civilian pilots typically don't get to fly. Uh, not that they don't get to, but there aren't airports um, very close to them that can do it. And it's a very strange approach, typically only used by really the Navy and Air Force, I believe. Uh, more on that later in another video. But uh, back to instruments real quick. 
So we got oil pressure, temperature, the battery volts, and the ammeter uh, over here. The turn coordinator, uh, just like the artificial horizon, in a sense, uh, the wings are going to tell us the orientation of the airplane, kind of. It gets kind of, I'm not going to explain the difference right now between turn coordinators and a turn and slip indicator, and, and if it tells you the rate of roll. Or anyway, we'll, we'll move on. The ball uh, is basically a giant level, kind of. It's making sure that we're in coordinated flight. Um, which again is a concept we can explain another time. Going back then to the heading indicator in this aircraft. This one is, it uses a gyroscope. It has to be manually set. So as you can see, it looks like we're going due west here. Now if we look up at our magnetic compass, which is not set, it's an actual compass. This, you can just turn to whatever heading you want. You're magically flying south now. Um, this is what's right. So, in a lot of newer aircraft... Okay, great, Bob, Lima, BFR, altitude is your discretion. Trust is now behind you, no factor. In a lot of, uh, newer aircraft, this would be what's called slaved. Sure, Snyder, Tango, Foxtrot, overflying traffic is now five northeast of your position, northeast bound. No factor. It would be slaved, so... But, uh, it's slaved, you wouldn't have to set it. But now, since it's a real heading indicator that processes, has gyroscopic procession, we have to keep resetting it uh, every once in a while on the plane. So, we're going about 260, 260 degrees, so we'll set that down here. But it's basically just a compass. Here we have the vertical speed indicator, it's read in thousands of feet. So if it were at the, uh, the error, or the needle were at the 10 up, we'd be climbing at 1,000 feet per minute, 10 down is descending at 1,000 feet per minute. We have a carbon monoxide detector, some instrument lights, map light, uh, which probably controls this one up here or the one on the side, not sure in this plane. We have cabin heat and air controls. Uh, we have the radio switch, the backup radio and avionics switch light controls, circuit breakers, the magneto switch, or basically the, the key that starts it, um, which engages the magnetos in the engine, which are like magnetic. Senior 794, uniform tango, nostril approach, good evening, altimeter 3007, visual approach, runway 23 right. Excuse me, Mr. King Air, I'm talking here. Senior 4, uniform tango, descend and maintain 7,000. We might need to cancel flight following so we don't hear these people anymore. Um, but we have the carburetor heat. This is a carbureted engine, just like a lot of cars. I assume most cars. Uh, I'm not like a very big like engine head. I enjoy cars. I, I like cars, but not like that. Uh, we have our throttle, or basically the gas pedal. Uh, the mixture, which we talked about a little bit, this controls our flaps, flap indicator, we have a GPS. You can see we're passing Morristown Airport, which I've uh, flown out of and into a lot, actually. It's where the main location for the flight school that I learned at is at. And Bonanza 15 Whiskey, what altitude are you descending to? Um, other than that, we have uh, RPM gauge, exhaust gas temperature, uh, suction, generator warning Bonanza light, 15 Whiskey, copy, I'll thank you. engine hour time, which is basically like your... Um, wow, my brain is not working. Basically, in your car, your odometer, there we go. The altimeter, um, in, in simple terms, it helps ADCCS on radar and ha keep track of our information rather than just being a dot. And that's the bulk of it in a smaller uh, general aviation aircraft like this. It's relatively simple. Uh, but like an idiot, I brought one SD card. We've got about 53 minutes left of recording time. Uh, I think I'm going to save it for the approach into Knoxville and then the flight back uh, where it's darker and probably not blinding you.
and then it'll be really pretty. Really pretty with all the lights of the buildings and everything. So I will talk to you a little bit closer to Knoxville on our approach. Feel free to skip 30 seconds, but uh, the audio messed up and I lost my headset connection, so we're just going to time lapse through most of the approach and then cut to the landing. I hope you've enjoyed our flight. Now we have, of course, the beautiful city of Knoxville in front of us. The Knoxville Downtown and Island Airport is off to our left side. This approach is actually pretty fun to fly because of noise abatement procedures from the people who knowingly bought their houses next to an airport. You have to fly over the river to avoid the houses, and then at the last minute, you turn right to land on the runway. I just realized I've been moving to the left and right of my mic, but it isn't set on stereo, because um, I'm doing this voiceover while my computer, or while I've been editing, and my computer fans sound insane, so I can only have it monodirectional. Anyway, please enjoy this landing. Um, for those of you pilots, I pretty much almost completely edited out the stall horn, so don't worry about that being loud. below the bad piece. Here's me being dumb. Uh, making my flight attendant arrival cabin announcement, which I guess you can, couldn't really hear. I said something like, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Knoxville, where the local time is 8.47, or whatever it is. Please remain seated with the, your seat belt fastened until we have come to a complete stop at the gate and the captain has turned off the fasten seatbelt sign. Since this is the first full real life ASMR flight, we know you didn't really have any other choices. I think I just stuttered. I don't know. I'm listening to myself on no weird half second delay and it's kind of hard to talk. We know you didn't have another choice since we are the first real life ASMR full of flight. But nonetheless, thank you for choosing Nick's ASMR Airways. A survey's been sent to your phone. If you go down to the comments, please share your suggestions with us as we strive to be the number one ASMR airline in the world. Another thank you to all of our Sky Miles members. We have a couple of VIPs on board today. Mr. Kyle Flucher, Mr. Finn, and Mr.
Mr. Love One. Thank you for your continued loyalty and for being VIP level with our airline. Enjoy your stay.